Oh man, here we go again, another video where I am talking down on the Boston Red Sox. It's starting to become old at this point, honestly. What is going on YouTube? It is your boy Justin Meta here on YouTube and on Bean Town Takes. And at the recording of this video, it is August 7th at 11 o'clock p.m. And the Red Sox just lost 3 out of 4 to the Kansas City Royals. Yeah, that's where we're at right now. Let me just rephrase losing to the Kansas City Royals. We didn't lose to them. We got blown out by them. I will say this. I'm disappointing in you, Alex Cora, a little bit. <laughs> If you guys don't know, you guys probably don't know because I did take a vlog down a long time ago. August 6th is my birthday. So at the recording of this, Saturday was my birthday. And the Red Sox choked that game away. They could have won that game, but Alex Cora left Garrett Whitlock in for one inning too long, which I knew. I knew he, la he put him in for one inning too long. I knew it. He's your closer. Why are you having him pitch three innings out of the bullpen? Is your bullpen that bad where you have to have Garrett Whitlock pitch three innings? I don't get it. I just don't get it. A walk-off home run in the bottom of the ninth inning. Red Sox lose on my birthday. I was like, you know what? Whatever. Whatever. That's just this year go going forward. Now we head ho home to Fenway on a very tough homestand. We face the Braves, Baltimore with one game, and the Yankees in a series. Now let me remind you, normally I would say freaking Baltimore. Notice I didn't say freaking Baltimore this time. Because they right now are currently holding a playoff spot. At the time that I'm recording this. If they're not, they're damn near close to a playoff spot. I have to check the standings to see exactly where they are in the standings. But I'm pretty damn sure that the Baltimore Orioles are in a wild card spot in the American League. And that is embarrassing for you Boston Red Sox. The fact that you guys spent this whole entire offseason... You may have gotten the wrong pieces, but you still spent. You got Trevor Story, you got James Paxton, you got Rich Hill, you got this, you got that, you got this, you got that, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, Baltimore is in a rebuild. They are actually in a rebuild, John Henry. You are not. And they are ahead of you in the standings by three games now. They are ahead of you in the standings by three games now. Let me do the math real quick. They do not hold a playoff spot. But they are like two games out of a wild card spot. So yeah. That's your Boston Red Sox right now. And instead of selling your pieces away, you bought. Which, I mean, I get that you kind of have to do that in order to prove to Xander and Devers that you are still competing at a high level. So you're not just going to blow away pieces for your franchise. So... I get what you why you didn't sell off your pieces away, but still, man, if you're not going to re-sign those pieces, what sense was that, really? Like, I don't get it. So, today, we're going to watch the Red Sox are officially doomed in 2022. Um, couldn't have put it much better myself, honestly. Do I really think they're going to turn it around and get a playoff spot? I hate to say this, I would love to see them do it. That would be that would be spectacular. But here is my belief belief in them right now. This little. And one person I don't believe in at all made two freaking errors today. Jaron freaking Duran. Why is he still here? And why is Cora saying Oh, we have faith in this guy. Do you really have faith in that guy? Or is it the fact that you don't have any decent outfielders besides Tommy Pham and maybe Alex Verdugo that you just have to play him? Is that the reason why you're playing Jan Duran? And I hate to say this. I really hate to say this. 
Because this guy is not a decent outfielder either. But I'd rather have Jackie Bradley out there right now than Jaron Duran. I hate to say it, but I would. And I think Jackie Bradley Jr. is not as good as he used to be anymore. He's not as good as he used to be anymore. So I'd rather have him in the outfield than Jaron Duran. That's how much I hate Duran. That's how much I don't like his game. That's how much I think of a punk he is. And honestly, those fans who were taunting him today in the bleachers and giving him crap for dropping two balls. You know what that means, Duran? Wake your ass up. Because the fans are right. You do suck. So that's what I gotta say. Uh, leave a thumbs up if you guys enjoy these videos. Subscribe now if you guys are new. You guys know what to do. Go check out my website. Link is in the description down below. If you guys want to help donate to go to games, my Venmo is in the description. Anything else, appreciate all the love and support. I will say this. I normally don't give out future videos on YouTube. But, I am going to confirm right now. I will be at Fenway Park this Friday. When Andrew Benintendi returns to Boston for the first time as an opponent and as a New York Yankee. That is August 12th. I will be there. I know some of you guys have been asking me, Hey, I would like to meet you at Red Sox, at a Red Sox game. I'd like to meet you in Boston, blah, 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 so on and so forth. So I'm just letting you guys know right now, I will be at Fenway on August 12th. I might be showing up there like around right at game time. If any of you guys are going and want to meet, maybe I'll have like a little meet and greet by the concession stands in right field. Maybe I'll do something like that. Because um, I know some of you guys have been asking me to let them know when they're going to games, so on and so forth, because they like to meet up. Maybe I'll do a little meet up on Friday. And there will be a video coming out Saturday on Ben and Tenny's return. It's going to be interesting. I don't know what I'm going to wear yet. I don't know if I'm going to wear my yellow shirt that's hanging up right there. I don't know if I'm going to wear my Bogarts jersey. I might even consider wearing my old... Navy Benintendi Red Sox shirt. Maybe. Maybe. I'll be cheering for Benny as the game goes on. I'm not going to boo him. It's going to be interesting. Is he going to get cheers or is he going to get boos? Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. And you know what? Without further ado, let's hop in the video. Let's see why this person thinks the Red Sox are officially doomed in 2022. I mean, it's kind of obvious, but... So I continue and continue and continue to watch the Boston Red Sox. And they continue, continue, continue to let me down. Oh, this guy changed his uh, username. This guy, I think this guy changed his username. I think this guy used to be... You bets believe. Great dude. Covered the Red Sox for years. Shout out to this dude. He brings out amazing content on Instagram and all that. I'll leave his Instagram in the description below too. I think his Instagram is now Bogey Waves. And then he still has his You Bets Believe account for him following Mookie Bet. So, shout out to this guy. He actually follows me on Instagram, too. So, appreciate all the love and support from you, my guy. Now, and obviously, at the trade deadline, they, they didn't sell. They traded Vasquez, but they brought in Tommy Pham. They brought in a catcher over from the White Sox. No pitching, though. And the team just isn't focused. It's not locked in right now. They understand that they are not competing for a World Series. They might tell you that they are, but... Just the feeling in the locker room in the clubhouse, not that I'm in it, but you can just see the body language of the players. This team feels defeated, and they just lost 3 of 4 to the Royals. They're actually down 9 to 3 right now. And They lost 13 to well, whatever it is. And then Verdugo hit a double play. JD struck out against Scott Barlow, who's a good pitcher. I was like, I can't watch it anymore. I'm done. I couldn't I'm watch it either. Keep watching the games. We've got the Braves next. Like, I obviously, it goes on, but I'm just saying, dude, like, we're now two games under 500. The playoffs are pretty much as good as gone, unless like a miracle happens. But we just don't have the personnel to be able to win. This and is your best belief. Okay, had yep. Everyone locked in and being like, we can do this. I think that might be enough. The only reason why I know that is because his code is bets. <laughs> enough to try to sneak in, but the fact that we don't have the players, any upgrades in pitching, help, we're not healthy. Just got Devers back, but like, you know, Chris Sale's out. Uh, Michael Walker is going to be coming back. We don't have James Paxton yet. Like, it's just. It's not a good look right now, man. I mean, this series loss to the the Royals was just... It might even be one of our worst of the series. We've had some really bad moments, but... I mean, this was bad. I mean, we gave up a walk-off home run last night. 
and then we are down six runs right now in the bottom of the ninth, or excuse me, bottom of the eighth. Two games against the Braves, and one against the Orioles, and then three games against the New York Yankees. I love the fact that he showed is not highlights from David Ortiz. I think that, I think that's what he's compiling with here. Please give me some good mo Yankees. moments instead of what we, we, what we have right now. Seriously, out of playoff contention, if we already aren't right now. So, yeah, man, I know it's kind of a down video, but. I just got to speak the truth, you guys, man. The Red Sox are not in a good spot. The future's bright, though. We've got good prospects. We still have Devers. Hopefully, we can uh, you know, retain J.D. Martinez and Xander Bogarts. We still got Verdugo and Story coming back. Chris Sale, Alex Cora is a manager. Hyam Bloom has proven that he can take a team to the World Series. No. You're my guy, but no. You got my support, but no. Bloom has shown me nothing yet nothing until he actually proves that he wants to keep homegrown guys and actually good players on this roster until then he is not the guy to run our team to a world series sorry he's just not the guy he's a good person to rebuild and retool your team maybe yes but to get to a World Series, no, he's not that guy. Sorry, he's just not. For example, if you are in a World Series now mode, or let's just say you want to compete at the top level, but you want to rebuild the bottom levels, you would have kept Kyle Schwarber. You would have kept Hunter Renfro. You would have maybe even kept Eduardo Rodriguez. You would have kept Andrew Benintendi. You get what I'm saying? You definitely would have kept Mookie Betts. Even though that was for salary reasons. Your boy, Mookie Betts, they should have kept him. I don't have faith in this guy. Two out of the three years... This guy has missed the playoffs. I know Dave Dombrowski depleted your farm system, but almost every single year he competed for a playoff spot as he was the general manager for your Red Sox. You were competing. Well, you, let me rephrase that. You were at least in the playoffs and you had a chance to make a good run. So. I don't think Bloom's a guy. I really don't think Bloom's a guy to get you a World Series. I don't. I'm sorry. I just don't feel that way. Tampa was two games out last season with the Red Sox. Big reason why, because of all the guys he brought in, with the Kike Hernandez and things like that. But, yeah, man, I'm going to sign it here. I don't really have much else to say, dude. It's just a bad loss, a bad series loss. And I don't think I felt this down on the Red Sox all season, man. It says a lot, too. We got up to a slow start. That it's up oh shit. I didn't mean to do that. But yeah, that's the thing too. Let's be real. The slow start really hurt them too. Because if you got off to a hot start at the beginning of the year at least, then this down this little bit of a downfall right now isn't as painful. I mean, look at the Yankees right now. The Yankees aren't playing that good right now either. But they've played good up to this point to back them up. So they can afford this little downfall a little bit. You can't, however. You cannot afford it whatsoever. I don't know, man. It's just, it's right now it sucks to be a Red Sox fan because you had high hopes at the beginning of the year. And the fact that they're completely low on expectations on your end makes it even worse. At least if you thought that you were going to suck, right? And you were competing for a playoff spot, then it's different. But you should be competing for a playoff spot, period. Period. And the fact that you are in last place in the American League East, that just says a lot too. So... Like again, there was no real expectation for Baltimore. There was no expectation for them. They were expected to be last place in the American League East. And they've really, 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 really exceeded expectations. 
So that's why people are saying they're having a great year. They may not be in a playoff spot right now, but in terms of how good they're playing compared to what their expectations were at the beginning of the year, this has been a great season for them so far. And going forward, I mean, all the all, all the front office staff there has to see, okay, we have a young group of guys who want to compete at the highest level. Now is the time we put our chips all in. Now we go out and get free agents to help this young core get better. Then by the time you know it, there's five teams in the East you're competing with. You know what I mean? You think Baltimore is good now? Wait till next season. Unless they are really, 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 really freaking stupid. And don't really invest in their major league team this offseason. They're going to be around next season. So... You're not just doomed 2022. You might be doomed in 2023. You might be doomed 2024. You might be doomed in 2025. Who the heck knows? One thing that's certain right now is that this season pretty much is a wash. This season's pretty much a wash. And you have to thank some of the players. Some of the players do deserve blame. Jaron Duran. JBJ. Even though a lot of people are trying to tell me that he's a good outfielder. He's still the same dude. He's not the same dude. Injuries is definitely an issue. The pitching has been horrible. Saturday night, Cora's decision making was bad. And the biggest blame out of them all, really, the biggest blame out of them all, Heim Bloom and his decision making. That has been the biggest factor so far in how the Red Sox have been this whole entire season. Like I said... Like I said, I'm going to say it again, and I'm going to say this with a straight face. Andrew Benintendi, please give this front office staff a slap across the face and a big F you and go win yourself a ring. Please, I would love nothing more than to see this front office staff get a slap across the face and a big F you by seeing another Boston star who left here because they did not want him go out and win a World Series Especially with the New York Yankees. That would definitely wake up this front office staff and say, Oh boy, we need to do something. Because we really screwed this up. So, that's all I got for this video. I really didn't want to make another react reaction video for the Red Sox. But I feel like I have to because at this point it's just hard to watch. I really had some hope after the trade deadline, but after losing 3 or 4 to Kansas City, I just lost it all again pretty much. So, that's going to do it for this video. My if this is my last video before August 12th, my next video will be Andrew Benintendi's return. I'm excited to be there. I'm excited to go see my friends and family at Fenway. This will be the first time I see them as a 24-year-old man. New year, new ye me. I can't wait for the journeys going forward. And uh, all I have to thank is God, my supporters, my family, my friends, and everyone for praying for me and all that and giving me a second chance at life. It really means the world to me. I put out a little post on my birthday the other day. I had a lot of love and support on it. People DMing me and all that. Happy birthday. I'm glad you're feeling much better. And so on and so forth. I'm 32 pounds heavier now than I was when I was sick. So I'm at 143 pounds. Which is the most I've ever weighed. It's the most I've ever weighed. And I'm on the uphill now. In terms of my health. My next steps really is to hit the weight room. That's, I'm starting that this week. I'm going to be hitting the gym a little bit. Uh, start a little steady and then work my way up to the uh, heavier dumbbells and all that stuff. I can't wait. I can't wait to get a little bit of muscle on me now. Seeing that I have proof that I can actually gain weight now. It means the world. It means the world that I get a second crack at life. And again, guys, I'm not going to waste this opportunity for you guys or for anybody. I'm just going to be myself. From here on out and i'm going to be the best that i can be going forward 
and I can't wait to take you guys on this journey. And that's just pretty much all I have to say. Thank you guys for watching this video. It's been Jesse. I'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, wait a minute. No, I'm not going to end on that note. I'm not going to end on that note. To my OG subscribers on YouTube, this is for you who've been there since day one. Thank you guys for watching this video. And don't forget to make your day a Grand Slam. That's for you guys. Love you all.